investigation reveals questions about NASA's repeated use of tax dollars to fund pricey flights in business and first class. National investigative reporter Mark Greenblatt was the first to expose these problems, and now he is finding the U.S. House of Representatives is getting involved. The bill is passed without objection. The motion. And when the gavel dropped, the House formally scolded NASA for flying fast and loose with your tax dollars. It comes in direct response to our investigation that found NASA authorized nearly 500 upgraded trips costing anywhere from $3,000 to $10,000 apiece. A recent Scripps News article documented what appears to be a massive overuse of premium air travel at, at NASA. But when an oversight committee tried to get answers during a hearing last month... I'm not responsible to the media. NASA Administrator Charles Bolden didn't tell the truth to Congress while under oath and confronted with this. You yourself using a first-class ticket to travel from D.C. to Los Angeles at a cost of $1,600. I'm not sure how they got or where they got the data. I don't travel first class. But NASA's records showed otherwise with that Washington to L.A. upgrade right here. Can we trust anything that you're telling us or Congress, sir? Another problem, five years worth of error-filled disclosures NASA filed about its upgrades. The government's paying for it? Again and again. I, I think it's inappropriate. It's ridiculous. Federal employees flying on the taxpayer dime must fly coach unless they can cite an exception to regulation. And NASA did just that for many of Bolden's upgrades, noting the trips lasted longer than 14 hours, which is the reason the agency says it allowed Bolden to upgrade to business class to fly from Beijing to Washington. Washington with another top executive, Michael O'Brien, paying more than $16,000 each. Combined, it's enough for 34 separate tickets at the going coach rate. But for months, NASA refused to provide any justification for three of Bolden's other upgrades. Would you have your people just cooperate with the media? I I'm not responsible to the media. I am responsible to this committee and the American taxpayer. But as for one of those unexplained upgrades, where NASA records show Bolden flew first class to speak to students. And you yourself using a first class ticket to travel from D.C. to Los Angeles at a cost of $1,600. Mr. Chairman, I, I would be very happy to show anyone my travel records. Uh, you know, this is a case of, of I'm not sure how they got or where they got the data. I don't travel first class. But take a look at records NASA provided us, and you'll find that Washington to L.A. upgrade right here. After the hearing, Bolden wouldn't answer questions. Sir, your communications director next to you gave me this report, which has you flying for $1,600 from Washington to Los Angeles in first class. Now, can we trust anything that you're telling us or Congress, sir? Where they got the data, I don't travel first class. But NASA's records showed otherwise with that Washington to L.A. upgrade. Now, Bolden testified that he gets some upgrades using frequent flyer miles, but to date, NASA has provided no proof of that. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I always forget those flights where they hand out free champagne and I get to sit in comfy chairs. So I guess that's what he means by I never fly first class. Up next, turn down your volume if you want. My wife and I attempt to... Sing a little parody. You may have heard the song before. It usually says all about that bass. In this case, it's going to be all about fake space. Yeah, it's pretty clear. There ain't no space crew. But we can fake it, fake it, like a follow to the moon. Our rockets boom, boom, that all the boys chase. With perfect mathematics, flying about with spaces. Hassle Black Magazine, working at Photoshop. You think this shit is real, but we won't ever stop. We steal that looty, looty, just raise them up. Cause every dollar that we steal from you, guarantees will never stop. Yeah, Obama, he told me, don't worry about the lies. Just remember to monthly launch something to hypnotize. You know it won't be realistic cause we're gonna show a ball. But if that's what you're into then rotate and spin along. Because you know we're all about fake space. 
about fake space. No shuttle. We're all about fake space. About fake space. No bubble. We're all about fake space. About fake space. No shuttle. All of space is fake. <laughs> Composite <laughs> images. Go ahead and publish. No, no one, one notices. notices. And they'll be saying, hey, the Earth, Earth is flat. But I'm here to tell you that the Nazis and the Freemasons are in control of that. Yeah, Obama, he told me don't worry about what dies. To keep up with deception, sometimes you will lose some guys. Yeah, our plans won't be perfect or even make sense at all. Cause we're NASA, we're Jesus, we've come to Save the ball. Because you know we're, we're all about and we're fake space. and there's space, no shuttle. There we're is all no about outer space. space, it's, it's all fake. fake, no shuttle, no all astronaut, no space, no space, no, space. Space. no, no shuttle. shuttle, it's all, all about fake space. space, it's so fake. Yeah. Yeah. We're NASA and we're fake and in space, no shuttle. We're flying All in the ISS and filled with the helium. There is no outer space, it's okay. I hope you fall out of the sky. Hi, 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 hi. I hope you tumble to Earth in a big fucking fiery ball. All right, so next we'll talk about NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB, or as I think it stands for, Very Average Building. We have reports that say it's got 45 floors, and there's other reports that say 40, and still others that say 52. And yet, they claim to be the tallest one-story building in the United States, so can't have them all. I also have that it was composed of 10,000 tons of air conditioning equipment or contains 10,000 tons of air conditioning equipment uh, for those math majors that's 20 million pounds uh, the interior of the building is so vast it has its own weather including rain clouds forming below the ceiling on very humid days that's what Wikipedia says you can believe that also if you want or you can believe it gets humid in there and the ceiling drips so I also just realized that my shower has its own weather system with clouds forming at the top and it'll rain on you occasionally but I'm sure you've seen this building in many pictures it's always taken from very high up or as in the case of this picture uh, from the cameraman who's laying on the ground to give you a nice appearance of a super huge building like only NASA could build so it should be painfully obvious that somebody has a significant size issue and that somebody is NASA. You'll see here them bringing the Saturn V in. You see the crowd that's gathered to watch. In the next picture we have another crowd gathered to watch something else be wheeled in. And in the next picture you put them on top of each other and you can see by the red lines it's the same people. So interesting and those both came from NASA's website. Here we've got the top of the vertical assembly building taken from Google Earth from 1,009 feet and then we've got Yankee Stadium taken from the same height because I heard a tour guide say they say you can put Yankee Stadium on top of the building and have it an acre left over well as you can see by marrying those images from the same height on Google Earth you'd be lucky if you could fit the playing field on top of the building here's another view from the road where it looks very unimpressive I'm unimpressed there's one from a car again very unimpressive so let's get to some of the numbers so if and I stress if this door is 13 feet 8 inches which I'm 6 foot 2 so it means I can fit in that door twice with another foot to spare then we figured out that each of these panels would be one and a half feet one foot six inches nine of those panels would be 13 feet six inches and then you'll see at the top there with the little blue line going out there's your extra two 
So from that we now know what each of these panels is in total size, which is 12 feet. As we look higher on the building, we can see that for every three of those smaller panels, it equals two of the larger white panels. So from that we know that two of those panels is 36 feet, or in half, 18 feet each, which I have serious doubts about. So we'll start with the flag, which is claimed as the world's largest. It is painted on the building in the upper left-hand corner. It certainly looks backwards to me, but that's just me. I also didn't know you could claim something that was painted to be the biggest in the world, or else I'd just go paint myself as 10 feet tall on the road outside, and I'll call Guinness, and we have a new world's record for the tallest man. So I guess that's how NASA gets all these records. They also claim that flag is 209 feet. But if you look carefully, you'll see that we've done the math, and with 11 panels of 18 feet, that flag is no more than 198 feet. Sure, it's only 11 foot difference, but it is a 11 foot lie from a scientific organization. And also they claim that the blue section, or the state section, is bigger than a regulation NBA basketball court, which an NBA basketball court is 92 feet in length. And again, we can figure out from simply looking at the flag that it consists of only four 18 foot panels, which comes out to 72. 20 feet off, I guess we have to give NASA a break. They're only scientific and mathematical. We wouldn't expect exact numbers. And again, you should go and research this yourself, but you'll also see that this building is always being hidden by something, or it's hard to find a true picture of every side of it. We have come up with a total of 27 panels, and that brings it to about 486 feet, again, in the unlikely event that the panels are the size they say. Why would I question that? Because why would they lie about it, the building being 525 feet? if it actually, even by their numbers and their given size of the panels, is at most an absolute most of 504. And that's taking 28 total panels from the top to the bottom, which you'll notice isn't possible because the top panel isn't even full and neither is the bottom. So 27 would be the most that you should give them, which brings it to 486 feet, a lie of about 30 or 40 feet, but hey, they also tell you that stars are light years away, and if they told me a star was four light years away, I'd say it's probably give or take about 25 trillion. So, you see here we got the Statue of Liberty. Now the statue stands 305 feet, and that actually includes the base. So I'll go ahead and place the Statue of Dishonesty next to it, and you can see NASA thinks quite highly of itself claiming that their building is 526 feet. If it were up to me, I'd guess uh, maybe 425 feet max, but you know me. I like to measure things with tools and rulers and things like that. I don't just make claims and have a bunch of little boys run around and say that I'm telling the truth. So me and NASA are a little different. Now I do have a theory as to why NASA feels it's important to lie about the size of its building, besides being a bunch of douchebags. It would be because if you've ever watched a launch from, say, Launch Pad 39, they usually have in the shot taken from Highway 1A1 a fairly clear view of the entirety of the building. <clears throat> Problem with that is that Highway 1A1 is 15 miles from the Vehicle Assembly Building. So what that means is with the 15 miles, we must also have 150 feet of curvature. Meaning that as you see here in this shot, that building is pretty much fully seen. Yeah, there is a little bit of the bottom covered by some trees and some brush, but there's not 150 feet missing from that building. Unless you make a wild claim and says that your building is 550 feet high, then maybe somebody looks from that distance and says, ah, maybe there is 150 feet missing, but there's not. You can see here in this video, Every bit of that building is seen. Scroll back to where you're way behind at the 15 mile mark. And you can start to understand why maybe NASA isn't being as honest as they should be. Then again, they also claim to send these rockets to space. So what do you expect? 
two. Next, we're blessed One, with more fake zero. space. I put the balloons the there because that's what it looks like to me when these off. rockets take off. off of the there World it goes. Fire. Look at it speed F away. SPC-5 payload with the Atlas V launch vehicle here, the for the United Rockies. States Air Force. Where a majority of your smoke comes out. Yep. So see that here? Watch Zero. my yellow marker. We have There's your smoke blower. And, lift off. Lift off. and the rocket takes off. SPC-5 payload with the Atlas V launch vehicle for the United States Four. Air Force. Here you see the straps come off. Got to hold that helium down. We have liftoff of the Falcon High. Falcon High has cleared the tower. Eight, seven, six, five. Now, here I want you to watch the left side of the screen and watch as this rocket takes off. Watch this smoke come out of nowhere. Left side of the screen. Here goes the rocket. It breaks free. Now, watch the left side. What is all of that? Oh, bullshit. Speaking of bullshit, you can't have bullshit without speaking about Collins, Armstrong, and Aldrin. Neil Armstrong. Leading the way, then Mike Collins and finally Buzz Aldrin. We're back at ABC Space Headquarters in New York, awaiting the still scheduled launch at 9.32 Eastern Daylight Time this morning of Apollo 11. Jules, did you have any difficulty getting out to the Cape this morning? Frank, we had no difficulty, but we, we practically didn't get to sleep at all last <laughs> night just to be sure we didn't have, or wouldn't have any difficulty. The shot we're looking at from the helicopter now is over Highway A1A, the main north-south road along the Atlantic, and we're looking at the beach just below the south gate, the old gate one of the Cape where we came in this morning. You know, the drama may be here at Pad 39 and on the moon this Sunday, that unforgettable drama, but it's somehow, for me, also on the roads around this spit of land which Spanish explorers 352 years ago landed on and called Canaveral for the fields of sugar cane. That's what Canaveral means in Spanish, cane fields. The fields of sugar cane they found growing here. We passed 10,000 odd cars that we get, guesstimated, parked around the gate one area at 4 a.m. when we got here, cars from every state, with little kids staring wide-eyed at the Saturn V, glowing in the huge xenon spotlights 15 miles away. And we saw teenagers with telescopes. It was a very same day. I'm pretty sure he's mistaken about the meaning of Canaveral. I just think it's a weird spelling for carnival. But anyway. America's first manned space flight. Americans cared then, I think, and they care now. And it was a very moving scene for me because, well, we were tired. They were tired. They'd been up all night. All those th thousands of people who we see now in daylight in those cars parked along the road that our live helicopter is uh, showing us. Two minutes, ten seconds, and counting. The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon at liftoff, will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. We've just passed the two-minute mark in the countdown. T-minus one minute, 54 seconds, and counting. Our status board indicates that the oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. We continue to build up pressure in all three stages uh, here at the last minute uh, to prepare it for liftoff. I really can't wait to hear what excuses NASA fanboys will have for why the moon's distance was given as 218,096 miles. That's not a slip of the tongue. It's even said later. It's not a mistake. They thought the moon was 218,000 miles away. So what is your excuse? How did they get to the moon on Apollo 10? Apollo 8? How did they orbit the moon and come back and still have the moon as being 20,000 miles short? How did they get there? How did they plan to have enough fuel? Come on, fanboys, what is the reason that your boyfriend beats you this time that you still think he loves you? We passed the 50 second mark. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. 
Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. Now watch here because you won't get to see the rocket light. Two, one. Zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Now if you watch closely, you'll see the rocket is leaning definitely to the right. And then watch them fix it. A few flashes, and now it's flying straight. Not real. Too slow. Looks like it's filled with helium. And a butane torch. Slowly, slowly, but gathering speed. Burning hot, burning slowly, slowly, gathering speed, burning hot and true. I mean, burning false, very, very false, burning fake. One Bravo. One Bravo is a abort control mode. Oh, this is the best part. Watch where. God comes out of the sky and steals the lying Freemasons' souls. Here it comes. There it goes. Took him. See, they never went to the moon. I told you guys. Altitude three, four miles an hour. Velocity 2,195 feet per second. Forty miles, altitude sixty-two miles, velocity ten thousand three hundred feet per second. Eleven Houston, you are go at four minutes. Gotcha. Still in sight from our long range cameras. Ground track. Burning hot, straight and true all the way. Toward a moon two hundred and eighteen thousand miles distant. A moment many Americans, many people never believed could happen or would happen. And many intelligent Americans believe it never did happen and won't happen. In fact, what is he actually talking about? What did Americans think wouldn't happen? People take off to the moon? It happened with Apollo 10. So let's move on to Mars. And we'll see if anyone's been studying very deep. Did you know that if you take the word Mars and flip the M and drop the tail down, and then add the letter E, it spells farce. So, I mean, they're putting everything right in front of us, guys. If, if you're not seeing these things, I can't keep helping you. No, but really, if you think that the rover is on Mars, get out. Get out right now of whatever house or room you're in. Go outside and throw dust on your head. Because you cannot be helped. There's nothing on Mars. And I'm about to show you some pictures that uh, will help prove that. Here's a picture of Curiosity's tire tracks, which are a joke to say the least. I don't know how they let this stuff out. Go to a site called gigapan.com and search for Mars images and you'll get images like this that clearly show mud piles. You can see in the middle of the screen there, that's a mud pile with water. You'll see here they just completely put one image in front of another and then did a terrible job of blurring the two together. You can see even closer in this next view. And we just keep letting them get away with it. Playing games, spending money, giving us shitty images. Here's a picture of the moon. We all recognize that. And we recognize the little butt there, the Tycho Brahe crater. And so I wanted to get some pictures of the landing spots. So, of course, you can go to the LRO site, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which I did. And this is the image I got. Wait a second. What happened to the Brahe crater? Let's look again. Okay, it's right there below in the middle. I see the two dark spots in the upper right. Making sure I've got the same image. Okay, back to this one. Womp, 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 womp. Stories in the world. 
Here in his own backyard, Mr. George Tauschman, utilizing scrap sheet iron, junk auto parts, and other odd fragments, has constructed a 22-inch reflecting telescope, probably the largest ever built by an amateur astronomer. With his ingenious but thoroughly practical instrument. Now watch this alien get caught on the moon. He gets on there and he says, whoop! And he had to run away. This is the cell formed from an old disc wheel held in place by the rim of a porthole from some long forgotten ship. The mirror was ground from the porthole glass. Mr. Tauschman, an able mechanic, has a well-equipped workshop in which he spends much of his time. Goodbye, Mr. Tauschman, amateur astronomer. And remember, it's not just NASA faking space. It's a whole host of clowns. ESA being one of the worst offenders. Go ahead and go to their site, and uh, you'll actually see somebody who does it worse than NASA, believe it or not. Like this image, it clearly is not our planet or where we live. Next, we have this fantastic eclipse, which, as you can see, they forgot to move the sun. It's supposed to be spinning. But, you know, they can't get everything right. That would be, that'd be tough. Also, the way our moon just drops in there that happens all the time in the sky too so that all makes sense who would even question it well that's about it for today thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video presentation if you did please subscribe to my youtube channel like the video and share it on your favorite social media sites there's a lot more to come so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time